So we're going to focus on uh, finding derivatives of scalar valued functions of a vector. We're talking about functions that have um, a vector input, in our case um, probably R, a vector in R2 or in R3, right, and a scalar output, so functions like this. Now, we talk about derivative, we're trying to find a rate of change for that function. Um, if we think back to what we did in Calc 1, all of our functions had a scalar input and a scalar output. And we could visualize their graphs. Here's our input variable, and here's our output. And at a particular location, so if you're at some location x0, then there's really only one direction you can go, because there's only one input, right? The only thing you can change is x. And so there's really only one number that specifies the slope. But if we go up to a function that has two inputs and one output, now that function creates a surface. So if this is my x-axis, and this is my y-axis, and this is my output axis, then for each value x and y, I have an output value, which you could think of it as for each point on the map, on a flat map, I then have a, a value that gives me, say, the altitude. So this creates some kind of surface here. Well, now we could think about because we have two inputs, or a vector of inputs, there's a direction that we, that we could travel in, right? There's all sorts of directions we could travel in. So starting at some point x0, y0, we could travel um, along the x-axis, right, and get a slope on this curve in the x-direction. Or we could travel along the y-axis and get a slope on that curve, right? Or we could travel in some combination of the two, right? So travel out through the center, and there'd be a different value for the slope. Just think about standing on the side of a hill, right? If you're standing on the side of a hill, here you are standing on the side of the hill, and there are directions you could walk where the slope is very steep, right? Or you could traverse the hill, just walk um, so that you don't gain any altitude, and then it's not steep at all. So depending on looking at the map down below, which is our input, depending on the direction that you walk in, you can have different values for that slope. Always, though, the slope measures um, is, is kind of a measure of if you increase the input by 1, how much will the output decrease roughly, right? So we're always thinking about, OK, if, if we have some function like f of x equals x squared, this is a calc 1 example, right, at um, maybe at x equals 1, then the slope is 2x, so the slope at x equals 1 is 2 times 1, that's 2, which means roughly that if you, if you move over a distance 1, then that gets multiplied by 2, and that's going to give you um, your change in output. Right? So the slope times change in input gives the change in output. If delta x happens to be 1, then, then you increase exactly the amount of the slope. So we're always saying the slope is telling us how far are we going to move up or down um, roughly if we move an approximate dif dif distance of 1 in the input space. So let's see if we can come up with a way of figuring out some kind of formula that will tell us the slope on some surface in a given direction. So we'll call that the directional derivative. So we want to figure out how do we find this slope of my surface at a particular point if I walk out in a particular direction in the input space. OK, so again, our picture is just that we have our two inputs, x and y, and then our output, f, determines kind of an altitude so that we end up with kind of a we end up with some kind of surface here. And we're going to be starting at some point, x0, y0. And we'll be walking in any direction, right? But that, but that direction is going to be specified by this vector u1 and u2. So we have this vector u1, comma, u2 that tells us the direction that we're moving in the input space. We want this to be a unit vector because we want to know how much would we rise or fall if we walked a distance of 1. So we'll want to make sure that the, the distance we're traveling, this unit vector is, it has, it, this vector has length 1, so that we're traveling a distance of 1. What we can do to do that, if we parameterize this line in xy space, um, then we would have our location in the input space as a function of t. And then we could just look at, OK, as a function of t, we have this, this line, and we could look at the, the profile of the curve as we go along. And so we could ask, well, what's the slope 
of that curve right here at t equals 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a parameterization. So we're going to parameterize this curve, and then we'll plug that parameterization into the function. We'll get our function f in terms of a single variable, the parameter t. So we, we, have to, we need to parameterize a curve that starts at x0 and goes in the direction of u1, u2. So we're going to start at x0, and we're going to take u1 times t and u2 times t. So there's our parameterization. Do you agree when t equals 0, um, then we're at the location of interest. And as t increases, then by the time t, by the time t goes to 1, we've taken a step of length 1 away from that point x0, y0, because u1 and u2 create this unit vector. So if we do this composition, then we're going to take f compose r of t. And that's going to work perfectly, because r of t has two outputs. And we can plug those in for x and y in our function. Then we could ask, what is the slope of this function with respect to t? And of course, the chain rule says that what we need to do is um, this function f, its total, we need to multiply the total derivatives, right? So this function f, it has a derivative df dx and a derivative df dy. And then we have to multiply that by the total derivative of this function r. Well, r prime of t is just u1, u2. Right? So we take the derivative with respect to t, we get u1 here and u2 there. So this is our total derivative, u1, u2. So the rate of change of this composition, in other words, the slope of this function, as I change t, right, I'm just traveling somehow along my surface here in a straight line underneath it. Um, then that's going to be equal to df dx times u1 plus df dy times u2. And that's going to tell me um, df dt. We'll call that, since that's how much f is rising or falling as we take a step of length 1 in the u1, u2 direction, um, we'll call that the directional derivative of f in the direction of u. We just have this notation, right, so that, so that we don't have to keep writing out the directional derivative of f in the direction of a particular vector, right? We'll just use this notation to express that. Now, if you look at this, you've seen, this looks like a dot product, right? It really is a dot product. This is df dx comma df dy dotted with u1, u2. And you've seen this before. This is, we have a scalar valued function. We take df dx, df dy, and we, we make a vector valued function. That is actually the gradient of f dotted with the unit vector u. So we've got the gradient of f dot u. Or if we use our del operator, this is del f dot u. So what we've seen then, here's our formula, that the derivative of f in the direction of u is equal to the gradient of f dotted with that unit vector u. This is how we're going to calculate a directional derivative.